Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the last, the number six part of training with Helium 10 and Bradley Sutton. Hello, Bradley. Hello, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you guys are. Yeah, it depends when you watch it, where you watch it. And uh, today is the part six and we will be covering product targeting ads, uh, how to maintain the listing, how to uh, calculate your profit uh, more precise using Helium 10 tools. And I think we'll cover a few more uh, different bits from Helium 10. But I just wanted very quickly to remember that in the previous five videos, you were able to learn how to uh, research the products, how to research uh, keywords, international keywords, also how to do listing optimization using Helium 10 uh, tools. And in the last session, we talked about product launches, keyword track, uh, index checker. So today, today we will talk about product targeting ads. I think it's something quite new, which came up just a few months uh, ago on Amazon, right? Yes. Yeah. It was um, yeah, last last part of last year, but even until now, so many people don't even realize it's there. Yeah, if you're used to something which was always on Amazon, and then suddenly Amazon threw something new, and yeah, maybe for people they need time to to test it and to understand what is it about and uh, bradley will give some light there we'll and we'll explain what's this for what it is and then we will go into listing uh, maintenance and a uh, few more uh, interesting parts and tools helium 10 has so bradley i'm i'm ready to listen what you have to teach us today. all right let me go ahead and share my screen here. There we go. All right. So, uh, what first? Of the, the first question for those who don't know is, what are uh, product targeting ads? Well, if we go here to uh, you know collagen peptides, like I always search, and we just go to any of these listings. All right. Uh, there's two different kinds of advertisements that people do on the products. You know, before the only one that was available is if you had Vendor Express or Vendor Central, and then you could put ads, you know, like this uh, right here on the bottom under the buy box. But now um, you yourself have the ability to do a targeting ad. Uh, sometimes it's right here. You'll see it. Uh, oh, yeah, here, here it is right here. Okay. Um, sometimes. They put it all the way at the uh, bottom. Yeah, here's another one right here. Sponsored products related to this item. So in the past, only Amazon could decide to put you there. But now you can actually tell Amazon, I want to put my uh, advertisement on this page uh, of this product. Okay, so the question is, what are some ways that you can find out good ASINs? You know, like this is an ASIN right here. Good ASINs to target. So. Uh, one way, uh, and this is a way brought up by my friend, uh, Paul Miller, he asked me about this and I was like, yeah, yeah, Helium 10 can do this. Let's say he is in collagen peptides and he's like, he wants to just at the beginning, put his advertisement on like the top 100 results uh, of collagen peptides. Now, normally without Helium 10, you would have to click and then here, let me put this A's in copy and paste like 100 times. Uh, even if you use Helium 10 before, um, if you don't know about this other tool I'm going to show you, it's a little bit faster. You know, instead of having to click on each page, you know, I can copy, you know, here, copy here, right? But there's a better way. You use a tool that almost nobody even uses <laughs> who are even Helium 10 users. It's ASIN Grabber, okay? Once you uh, select ASIN Grabber, it is similar to X-Ray, uh, but it gives not that much information. Now, this is going to take a, about one. Oh, actually, I, I thought it was going to take one minute because it made it fast. Uh, it, it gets uh, the top 100 results here. Okay, as you can see, it's going to keep getting results. And all you have to do is just download it into Excel. And right away, there, you have the top 100 results of ASINs for this and then you can put that right into your product targeting campaign and immediately have the chance to target every single one of these in two in two minutes that's that's the baseline way all right what are some other ways in order that you can find products to target again let's consider that you are in collagen peptides way number one i'm going to go to black box and i'm going to say helium 10 show me uh products that have collagen peptides in the title maybe they're at least selling uh let's just say one thousand dollars a month so i know they have some kind of volume 
all right? Some kind of search volume, all right? We know uh, this is in the health category, all right? And forget about price, but re one way, way number one, review count maybe five, right? Max, that means that it's almost a brand new listing. So I'm going to go here, let's go ahead and hit search. And here, here's 63 products. So here are products that might be selling that maybe don't have reviews yet, but are selling uh, money. It's like this one might have a couple. Oh, no, actually still doesn't have any reviews. So look at this. This is zero reviews. They're already selling maybe $1,000 a month. So yeah, uh, if you have Vendor Express, you definitely want to put your advertisement right here like this person is doing. Or you want to put it right here because look, if, if I am a customer of this product and for whatever reason I find this product, and maybe I'm scrolling. First of all, I see here, oh, no reviews. Eh, let me see, what is this product about? So I'm looking here. Okay, that's interesting, bullet points. What else uh, is this product about? And then all of a sudden I come here before I even get to description, right? All of a sudden I see, wait a minute, here is a collagen peptides and it has 1,400 reviews. I'm gonna go ahead and click here. Ooh, I like this, I'm gonna buy this. So you see, that is the power of product targeting ads. You put your ad on a page maybe that's not so great like this, no reviews. And if somebody sees your ad right here, maybe you can get that sale. So what was that that I just did? Review count five. What? Here's another one. Let's do review rating maximum 3.4. Here's another list right here. So here's a whole bunch with zero reviews or low reviews. Maybe you have a pill, right? Let's look at this. Look at this. <laughs> one. What is it? 1.5 stars. They're still selling money. Somehow somebody wants this. But again, they see this and like, ah, I don't know about this. 1.5 stars. Nobody likes it. Let me just scroll here, read about it. Reducing cellulite. Uh, I don't know about that. Let me just scroll, scroll. Oh, wow. Look at this. Five stars. Looks the same. I'm going to click this. Okay, I want this one instead. And now you just stole their sale. So that's another way to find uh, potential targets of trying um, in order to get uh, a sponsored ad on their page. Uh, what else could you do? Maybe uh, listings that are not optimized. Maybe maximum two images. Let's see. Are there any here? I bet you there's lots. No, 16 of them. Wow, amazing that it found 16. So let's find one here. Let's see if they have increased or not. Here is one look, two images, you know, one review, two images. If I'm looking at this product, this is just to very ugly listing to me. All right. Again, I scroll here and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if there's anything better out there. Let me click on this one. Ooh, look at these nice images, you know, okay, I'm going to buy this. So again, you can see the power of uh, finding the listings that are getting sales, but you know, you are better. So you put your advertisement on there and you can potentially get the sale. Um, but that's only the first way. The second way or the third way, actually, now we can say is product targeting. What is this? All right. So let's say this is your product um, or this is your your competitor's product. Let me see how much this guy is selling just to make sure this is a good one or not. Let's see here. Uh, he is selling, yeah, okay. He's selling about $25,000 per month. So this is maybe a guy that you're looking at, right? And your product is almost exactly like this. Like you have bone broth collagen, yours is vanilla flavor. Yours maybe cost about $38. So here is another idea about how to get products. Uh, I'm not sure if, if we have, this is a newer listing. I'm not sure if we have information on this. If not, I'm going to have to pick a different product. Let's see if we have any information on this product. Oh yeah, we have tons of information on this product. Okay, first thing I'm going to show you is frequently bought together. Where is that? That is here, right here, okay? So what Amazon does is it shows people that if it like usually in one purchase, they're buying bone, this is this product, right? Bone broth, collagen, but also sometimes they buy all three of these in one. Now this one is not very good because this, this is all the same. This doesn't help me from Amazon because this is all the same um, brand name, all right? But maybe at another time, a different product was here. So I'm going to look right here. This is this ASIN. I search for frequently bought together and we just have these three items that are showing. So most of the times, this is what people buy. So 
I could say that, wow, maybe uh, somebody is buying bone broth, but they're also buying this one. I'm going to pick a different one because uh, I think this is th this is why this is good too. This exposes, you know what's happening here? This person's are doing probably giveaways and making people buy it together. And then that is why they get frequently bought together right here. All right. Maybe they're using helium 10 gems, uh, add to cart two things. And that's how they got this. But let me find a better product that has better, uh, more interesting information. Let's see. Let's go back to collagen peptides. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at this one here. Oh, that's still the same. Everybody's using the same uh, technique. So look at Vital Proteins, though. Vital Proteins is a, a brand name. So usually you get, inter so see, look at this. For this one, there is something completely uh, separated from this product. This is oil. So people are buying MCT oil with this. Let's take a look at what information we have for this item. And maybe we can find some better information here. Okay, so you might be only thinking, what we talked about until now is if you have collagen peptides, I am going to only target people, other collagen peptides. That's what we talked about the last 10 minutes. But now I'm going to talk about different categories of products to do. So I didn't find this one. This is a this one that we don't have the information in. But look at this. ASIN, what is this uh, ASIN right here? This is the one I want to search for. I put the wrong one. Bulletproof Brain Octane Oil. Like what in the world is that? Actually, now I know about this because I always search collagen peptides. But do you know, um, um, Augustus, what is a keto diet? Uh, right? Keto diet? I think I've heard, but I have not. I'm not sure. Yeah. So what happens in the keto diet is that people are, uh, it's like a low carbohydrate and high fat. So people have something in the morning called the bulletproof, uh, bulletproof coffee. Okay. So bulletproof coffee, uh, what that is, is they have coffee and they put like butter, like a stick of butter <laughs> into the mm -hmm. coffee and they put like coconut oil or MCT oil. It's very high fat, but low carbohydrates and supposedly helps your metabolism. So now me personally, I'm always searching for collagen peptides. So I know that, but maybe you uh, or another person are trying to start collagen peptides. You had no idea that that is what people uh, are doing. So by, uh, by, by being able to look at the frequently bought together, um, you are going to be able to find out what things people are buying together. Like, look at this. This is, oh, look, this is exactly what I said. Butter, you know, a certain kind of butter that people are putting in uh, with this oil in their coffee. And then what is this? This is a, uh... oh, here, <laughs> this is actual coffee. So, so that, that exactly those three things I just mentioned. So you would want to put your ad right down here and look, this is exactly what people are doing. Look, so this is a coffee. So you might think, hey, I'm just going to target coffee, you know, but look what kind of cust what kind of competitors are targeting this product. MCT oil, MCT oil. What else? More coffee, coffee products. Collagen creamer, uh, infused coffee, coffee booster. So that's how we need to uh, kind of uh, uh, we need to kind of expand what we are doing and here we have uh, one here of uh, frequently bought together for this product collagen peptides bulletproof coffee collagen protein what is this oh butter completely different category or different category different uh brand butter um another coffee one uh, another butter one so guys i would take all of these asins and i would target this one what else do we have we've got the customer also bought let me search for that one. Let's see if we have that. 99 products. Where is that from? That is from right here. Uh, usually, sometimes on Amazon, they don't show it, but we have it here. Like right here, it'll say customer also bought. So we will show that here. C means customer also bought. So do you know the difference, Augustus, between frequently bought together and customer also bought? A lot of people don't know this. I didn't know this until maybe like four weeks ago. Uh, yeah, it I, I never thought of this really. So frequently yeah, so bought. Yeah. From what I understand, the frequently bought together is like you bought it at the same time, like same shopping session. I put this, I added something else to my cart and I checked out altogether. 
but customer also bought. Let me find a product that has customer also bought. I don't know if one of these, sometimes Amazon doesn't show it, uh, frequently bought together, customers recommend, but it'll come up right here and it'll say customer also bought and it'll have lots and lots of products here. So the difference is that maybe on Monday, I buy this product, all right? But maybe Wednesday, same week, I buy this product. So not in the same session, but at one time, I am a customer who has bought both of those. So that's why this list is, is so much bigger than frequently bought together is only three. That's why, look here, we have 99 products that, am, that we are showing you that people have bought together with this ASIN. And it's uh, sometimes even more of a variety. Collagen peptides, we have here some HTP mood support. Uh, here, look at this, cookbook. Isn't this, you see, you might not have ever realized, hey, I should be targeting a cookbook because this is a cookbook for that kind of coffee that I was telling you about or that diet, that bulletproof coffee. So this is why it's so important to use this in Helium 10 uh, to, to instantly get these um, different products that you never would have thought about to target. And I could put multiple ASINs. I just use one right here, but I could put like five or six or seven ASINs right here and find out all of the different ones and customer also bought. Uh, the last one is Amazon suggested. Uh, I'm, uh, let me, let's see if there's any that come up. Wow, this came up with 93. So for every ASIN, for this ASIN, Amazon has recommended list of keywords you should, of keywords, I'm sorry, of products you should target. So this is actually from Amazon. Amazon is telling you that if you have this ASIN, these are the ones that you should use in product targeting ads. This is not to say, oh, this is guaranteed to work. But many people ask us, hey, what does Amazon say we should do so that we can take that in consideration? And so we are showing that here. Actually, if this was your product, you can see this in your own Seller Central, you know, what Amazon recommends to you. But this is your competitor products. You, you can't, you don't have that insight into your competitor. So this allows you to look at any competitor instantly, what Amazon is recommending to them. Okay. And then, of course, like I said, if it is your product, then you, um, or if, if your product is similar to this, that means that you are also going to want to maybe target those same words. So there's like five or six different ways that we can pick different products for product targeting ads. Number one, use ASIN Grabber. Uh, number two, use Black Box Marketplace and search for, you know, uh, low review count, bad rating, bad, uh, low images. And then also another way is to use product targeting. And within product targeting, we could search for frequently bought together. We could search for Amazon suggested, and we can search for customer also bought. So with those methods, you should be able to within maybe 10 or 15 minutes, have a list of up to maybe 500 products that you could immediately put into product targeting campaign. In Amazon. Okay, I have two questions. So, in product uh, targeting campaign, is there a limit? How many ASINs can you put? I've never reached that limit. I'm not sure if there's a limit or not. Okay, so it's yeah, like I never, I never reached. Number. I'm assuming there is, but it, if it's if it's similar to, it's actually in the same place. Let me turn off the screen share here. It's actually in the same place as your manual campaigns. You know, so it, you do it the same way that you would do your, um, you know, keyword. Uh, searches. So, so if I don't think there's a limit really in, in your keywords, but you would want to put a personal limit. Like I said, Hey, I could find 500 ASINs, you know, at once. Yes, I can, but I'm not saying that's what you should do. I would take those 500 ASINs and I would cut it down to and segment it and test maybe 25, 50 at a time, maybe separate campaigns, and then see the performance uh, of each one and adjust accordingly. And what's the best way to, let's say I searched, I found uh, frequently bought together 20 ASINs. What's the easiest way to grab those 20 ASINs from a black box? Um, or... Right. Uh, let me see. If, uh, right now, the only way we have to do it is just right there on each item there. You can copy the ASIN. You don't have to click on the product or anything. You just copy the ASIN right there. But um, you can also download to CSV file. And then copy, you know, whole list from there. But usually, I don't want to download the whole thing because maybe there are some ASINs there I don't want to use. Um, but so to me, if I want to select, copy, paste ASIN, if I want the whole thing, download CSV. 
Yeah, I also thought so to download CSV and then you can yeah. just do whatever you want with that column of ASINs. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, we Any covered- Any questions live yet or can we go to the mm, next- uh, I'm checking No. Okay, is it necessary to target own products? Charlotte is asking. Some people do that because now, but, but here's the thing, here's the thing. As you saw from that sponsored ad section, there's like 300 pages of, of, of results. So even if you're targeting your own, like, hey, I want only my products to come up in there, you know, um, you're not going to block everybody, you know, fr from being there. So, so some people do that. I've heard of some people doing that, but I don't think that's uh necessary, you know, that's not hundred percent necessary. Mm -hmm. Great. Now we can go to the next topic, which was how to maintain the listing. Yes. Right. All right. Let me go ahead and share the screen. All right. So let's say uh, this is my product. Uh, actually, I don't know anything about this. I don't know. What the heck is that? Let me pick something else, uh, something that's more clear. Cold brew coffee. Or no, why don't you give me a guess? Why don't you give me give me a product to search for? All right. You always you come up with good have one. Better, uh, Yeah, L let's say uh, it's a case for hard disk. Uh, you know, like a case with a zip for hard disk. So hard drive case, maybe. Hard disk case. Let's see. Tell me if this is what you're talking about. Oh, is this very, it or very no? Advanced. Very advanced. Let, let's take any maybe if you we find more expensive one more interesting one like this yeah let's yeah it's not what they meant but doesn't matter oh, okay yeah okay yeah let, let's just pick this up i've never yeah. seen this in my life what is this <laughs> external hard drive case for this is like if you are uh president of the united states and you have <laughs> nuclear nuclear launch codes or something like this what the heck 94 dollars for her anyways okay so let's say that maybe um this is your uh this is similar to your product so what i'm going to do is let me first see uh what the better what the better keyword is hold on let's let's take a look at this this is interesting everybody can see this process now too i'm just curious what my I, since i have no idea what in the world is this product I'm just curious what kind of things people search for. Yeah, so now you're using Cerebro, Cere Cerebro, Cerebro yes. in Helium 10 to find out what keywords this product is targeting. Yeah, or, or what they might be showing up on page one for. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to hit mm -hmm. organic, and I'm going to do where are they on page one, maybe pay, position one to maybe position 20, at least 100 search volume, and two words. Let's see if there's anything here. Okay, so here we go. 16 keywords. All right, let's take a look. Uh, hard drive storage. Let me see. Ooh, right here. Hard drive storage case. That sounds like a very relevant keyword. They are page one, position three. Also, they are top. Uh, we detected in sponsored ads. So this is probably the main keyword. So let's take a look at this one. Hard drive storage case. There's that product right there position one in sponsored results. And so let's say that we are going to pick some, well, actually this, this might be something that somebody might, I've not seen very much competition here. This might be something that maybe somebody wants to go ahead and uh, <laughs> we might have just found a product, uh, Augustus, that has very <laughs> low competition. I think that people might jump on who are watching this because I am hardly seeing any competition here. Well, let's uh, <laughs> actually, it's interesting. You say there is no competition. Can you tell to the people how do you see that? What okay, are so you... here's the thing. So here is hard drive storage case, right? And if you are looking like, let's say this is the product, but look at this page. A lot of them, yeah, there's many people here on the first page, but none of these are competition with this. Why do I say that? Because look at this. Uh, look at this one. This is sixteen dollar, whatever, like for three point five inch. You know, for that one. Uh, here, another one, S different brand, same thing as this. Um, here's another one. Uh, they're, they're just trying to copy this kind of format. Uh, this is our product again. So far, there is nothing else like this out here. All right? So yeah. if, if I am searching in my mind, you see, let me stop the share real quick. So one thing we have to remember as sellers, and, and this is completely off the topic of the video, but it's very good that Augustus brought this out. 
think as a buyer, when you go to Amazon, you have something in mind you want to buy. Now you're going to search for whatever word you think is going to find that product. But in your mind, you already have an image of what you're looking for. Okay. So our goal as sellers is to try to make sure that we are uh, showing people getting our listing in front of these buyers, but we're also matching the image they have in their mind. Okay. And so that's why it's important when we do this, let me go back now that we do not consider like these are not the competitors. This is the one of the number one mistakes that sellers make. They say, okay, this is my product. This is my most important keyword. Everybody on this page is my competitor. No, they are not your competitor. Why do I say that? Because if somebody has the image in their mind of this kind of product, they land on this page. Guess what? This is not page one, position one. This is not page one, position two in the buyer's mind. They don't even care about this because this is not what they were searching for. Do you know what is page one, position one in the buyer's mind? Still not there. This is page one, position one in the buyer's mind because this is the first thing that they see that matches the image in their mind of what they wanted to buy. And actually on this page, here, 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 here's the, here's one that's the same. So page, that was page one, position one. This is page one, position two for a specific customer. And this is page one position. Oh, no, actually, that's not, that's a $12 one. That's it. There's two items on this page. Here's a sponsored ad, right? So this is what's uh, so important. And actually, this does have to do with what we are talking about today is maintaining the mature listing is make sure you're comparing yourself to uh the ones that are your direct competitors. I'll give you guys an example where it's more clear. Or the, uh, wait, how do you spell accord accordion? I think this is it, right? Accordion? Yeah, okay. So again, uh, we might have talked about this before, but maybe people didn't see that video. Um, if this was my product, right? Let me find X, like this. Let, let's just say this, this is my product, okay? $599 uh, accordion. This guy here, Amazon's choice, we might, people might teach you, oh, this is your number one competitor. He is page one, position one. You see, this is sponsored ad, but this is first one. And he's on your main keyword and he has Amazon's choice. But guess what? This is not my competition. I, I don't care what this guy is doing. It has nothing to do with me. Why? Because if somebody was trying to buy a professional accordion, they don't even, this doesn't even register in their minds. Never in a million years is somebody searching for $600 accordion for a professional band. They would never say, oh, I, I see this. I'm going to buy this kid's accordion instead. No, that's never going to happen. So um, let us let us actually go through this. Let us do this right here. This is, uh, where, where is that one I found? Right uh, here or here's one. Let me see. I'm going to pick a good one that's not selling that great. 34,000, 30, 50, 53,000, which one is not so here. Perfect. Here we go. Let's say this is my product. All right. $599 Horner Panther. And my, um, let me see how much I'm selling. I'm going to click here on the listing and check it out in extra. I would assume they are not selling many units because I saw their BSR is kind of low. So let's take a look. Maybe how many units uh, per month they are selling. Like, look, only 10, 10 sales per month. All right. So, you know, this could be five. This could be 15. You know, I don't know. Uh, but between five and 15 sales per month. So I'm going to put this here. It's going to be my first ASIN. All right. This is my product. This is my product. All right. So now I see that I'm only selling nine units. And, or you guys, you might be selling garlic press. You're only selling 10 units a day. And you're like, ah, what am I doing wrong? Or you might be selling hard disk case. What am I doing wrong? Why are my competitors selling more? So this is how you, you are able to compare yourself to the rest of your competition. You are going to do a similar process as we did when doing research for a new product. But now we are talking about doing research for mature product and your own product, not a potential product. This is actually your product. So I'm going to sort by sales. Actually, I'm going to sort by revenue. All right. 
and which ones are selling the most. Okay, so here, this one. This one is selling sixteen thousand dollars, you know, per month. That might have been is that is that mine? One eight. No, one eight. Where is mine? This is mine here, right? This is the one. No, where's where's the one that I pick? One L eight. Where is that one? One L eight. Good. It's all the way down here. Okay. That's only my product is making five thousand dollars a month. All right. So look at this one. This guy is making $28,000 a month. I definitely want to compare myself to him. You know, this is a professional accordion, $400. I'm going to put that here, okay? What else do we have here? Look at this one, $399, making uh, $23,000 per month. That's crazy. Let's go ahead and copy there, paste here. Let's keep going. Here's another one, uh, $599 looks very similar this is definitely my competitor even though in this situation this is actually my same brand but forget about that for now okay now what am i not picking look at this you might say oh wow 456 units a month but i am not going to include this why this is a children's accordion for 25 dollars. it is not my competitor this one another children's accordion 23 dollars. this is not my competitor let me find one more. This one here is another one selling $15,000. Remember, this is my product down here. One L8 selling only $5,000 per month. So I'm like, why are my competitors doing so much better than me, even though my product I think is the best? So let's do get keywords. All right, so I'm going to uh, show you what you are going to compare yourself, how you're going to compare yourself to your competitors uh, using a different methodology maybe than you are used to. So it comes up here with 317 keywords, okay? So I am going to put right here, I don't care at this time, my uh, position necessarily, um, but maybe I want to pick ones that at least two are ranking for. How many did I put up here? Two or three? One, two, or oh, four. So I'm going to put, yeah, two keywords. And let's go organic results. Here, 67 keywords. Okay, so 67 keywords. Now take a look here. We have the word accordion. All right, now accordion is a very valuable keyword, obviously. Now, this is the important column when talking about comparing yourself with a mature listing, relative rank, all right? What does relative rank mean? Relative rank is, this is my product, how I am ranked relative to my competition. It doesn't matter if we're talking page one or page 10 or whatever. Which one of all of these comes up first in the search results? And in this position, or in this case, it is number four. Why? I'm going to put my mouse over. I'm going to leave this right here, okay? As you can see, one of those competitors is ranked number three. One is ranked number six. One is ranked number seven. And it's hard to see on this screen, but you can see in bold, the fourth one is ranked number eight. That is my product, all right? So on this keyword, this is, I would assume, Maybe my competition is getting more sales than me on this keyword because I'm only the fourth one that shows up. You know, again, I don't care about my overall position on the page at this moment because the important point is if I am the first product that shows up compared to all my direct competition, that means most likely. I'm going to get more sales than them, all right? So I'm going to go through it here and look, look at this. Here, I find NR. What does NR mean? That means I am not even ranked. And this is a Spanish word. Uh, what does this mean, uh, Augustus? Accordion with buttons or <laughs> I don't know what that means, but something like that, right? So this means that maybe I don't even have this word in my listing. That's why I'm not even ranked. So just by doing this search, I already discovered one reason maybe I am not getting as many sales as my competitors is here is an important keyword and I don't even have it in my listing. So now I'm going to go in and change it. So the, what is the goal with this process? The goal is do this once a month and for all of your main keywords, you want to get relative rank one or two. 
What does that mean? That means that for these searches, you come up first before your main competitors. Okay. That I'm not saying page one, position one. No, it's page one, position one in your buyer's mind is what you uh, are doing for the goal. So this is very important and very few uh, sellers are using this technique. And um, do you know Tomer, uh, Augustus? Tomer Rabinovich from Israel? Uh, yes. I Well, I don't know him personally, but uh, I know this uh, smart guy, smart seller. Yeah, I just had him on the Serious Sellers podcast. Uh, everybody check out Serious Sellers podcast episode five. I want to say five, where Tomer goes on and he speaks of he's one of the first ones who started talking about this method. And he goes a little bit more into detail um, how to use this method when you are maintaining your mature listing. So that's the first way as far as how to maintain your sales in a mature listing. So before I go to just other general topics, um, is there any questions that you or the listeners have? I don't see any questions from the listeners. And uh, yeah, I don't have any other questions about this from my side. Okay, perfect. But I find it really interesting, this relative ranking. Uh, yes. I never thought of this. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, relative ranking again because uh, people sometimes are so obsessed with with page one and, and page one position one, but sometimes actually a relative ranking can be more important, uh, especially like in that hard disk case where page one is almost totally different kind of products. All right, so what else do you guys need to do about your uh, mature listing maintenance? I would definitely run uh, index checker make sure that you do not lose your indexing for keywords index checker you put your asin you put all the keywords that you're hoping you're ranking for and this will tell you are you indexed or are you searchable or not even more important than that always make sure that you have your uh, asins in keyword tracker and you are tracking which are the important words to you like here is a uh, makeup and uh for this word they are position eight, but um, let's see what's their history. Like, wow, they just all of a sudden appeared out of nowhere. Before they were not ranking. Now all of a sudden they jumped up to page one. All right, what about this uh, keyword? Compact makeup. Uh, I just started tracking this. They were not ranked before. Now 218. Maybe they're doing some sponsored ads. Who knows what they're doing? Now all of a sudden they are position 107. All right, uh, what about this one here? Let's take a look. Compact foundation for this one. They have always been on page one. But, oh, maybe this day they, they were out of stock or what happened? They went down to 72. Oh, they got it back up, and now they are on page one. This is so important to know um, where you are ranking, especially if you are trying to get to page one. You know How do you know if you're on page one or not unless you just go to Amazon and search for your product? All right, so uh, keyword tracker is very important. If you wanted to check every single hour, you hit this button, and now for 10 days, Instead of just once per day checking, this is once per day, we're checking the rank. Now, every day, 24 times, we're going to check in one day. Um, that's very important. Alerts is one of our uh, newest tools. This is really uh, mind-blowing for many people. Uh, one way that you could lose so many sales is if, number one, if hijacker comes on your listing. So if a hijacker comes on your listing, we are going to send you an email or text message and let you know, hey, somebody jump on your listing. Hey, somebody took your buy box. Before, that was all this tool did. But a few weeks ago, we added so much more functionality. Now, like, look at this one. If somebody changes your image, you get the notification. Imagine if, if your product, it went from this image to this image. What is going to happen to your sales? It's going to go zero. And you might have no idea unless you're looking at your listing every day. But as soon as Amazon, you know, Amazon actually changes images sometimes. If Amazon or another seller changes your image, you will get the notification. Uh, so this is very important. What if um, so somebody changed your price? What if somebody changed your title? Do you know that sometimes Amazon goes and changes the title randomly of listings? You would have no idea. But here, this way, as soon as that happens or if another seller does it, you would get uh, notified. The one that is potentially the biggest money saving one is product dimensions changed. Like imagine if you went from one inch and now Amazon folds it the different way and they put you in the wrong box and they say now you are 12 inches for this side. Guess what? Maybe you were paying Amazon $5 for shipping before. Now you're paying them $10.
And does Amazon tell you when they change it? Probably not. You know, uh, sometimes they send you an email, but usually you have no idea. When we launched this tool, there was one seller who told me, if you guys had this tool last year, it would have saved me $500,000. Now you might think that's an exaggeration, but no, think about it. If you're a big seller, let's say you have five products selling $100,000 each or uh, per year, which is actually not that much, you know, or I'm sorry, 100,000 units, you know, per year um, or $100,000. What would happen if they change uh, the dimensions and each of those five products that you're selling 100,000 units, now every product you just pay $1 more, you know, maybe you never notice it. Maybe you don't notice that if, you, if you're a huge seller, you don't notice that you're paying $1 more for shipping each unit because maybe it's a you know $75 product and it doesn't really register. But imagine you sold 500,000 units or five products and every one you're paying $1 more. You just lost $500,000 in one year because you did not see that Amazon is charging you uh, for a larger package than they are supposed to. You know, you, you're you the one, when you create the listing, you know how much your dimensions are. So you submit this to Amazon. But then sometimes, you know, some crazy employee in Amazon uh, might have the wrong tape measure or, or they might uh, put your thing in the box in the wrong way. And then they say, oh, no, 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 this is not right. I need to change to, to this dimensions. And, and you don't get notified. And this Amazon is going to charge you based on that. So now if Amazon changes the dimensions you gave them, we are going to send you an email right away so you can right away start a case with Amazon. The last thing in alerts, every day we are taking a screenshot of your product. So then if somebody does change something and you are not exactly sure what they changed or maybe you lost all your bullet points, you didn't save it and you don't remember, well, which bullet point did I have first? Every day we are taking a, a screenshot of your listing not only in desktop, but also in uh, cell phone status. We are taking every day how your picture looks like in, or how your image looks like in there. So that's, that's pretty amazing. I don't, I don't know anybody who is, who is going to, to, to that kind of a detail. So this is very important, guys. Once you have Helium 10 going, that you turn this on. All of this is free inside. If you're already a Helium 10 member, we added this, but we didn't increase the price that you are uh, monitoring these alerts alerts. Um, if you are doing a big uh, giveaway, you know, uh, using coupons, you want to use inventory protector that will set your max order quantity so that not one person is going to use 90% off coupon and buy 200 you know, units in one time. So you'd want to set that. Uh, Refund Genie, this is uh, one of the favorite tools of many of our users. Uh, if you have been selling on Amazon a while, most likely they owe you money, all right, because they lost something and they forgot to give you money. So we are going to go find where Amazon might owe you money. And then the last tool I'm going to talk about for maintaining your mature uh, Amazon account or mature listing is profits. And this is just our financial analytics tool where we are showing you uh, your sales trends, um, how many units you have sold your estimated net profit, we are showing you your ROI, which ones you have high inventory on, which are your best sellers, and all of this information, you know, we are showing for all marketplaces in Europe and all marketplaces in North America, actually even Brazil. Now we are showing and uh, Turkey, the, the newest marketplace. And even here we have uh, places where you can put your other expenses, even company expenses, so you can monitor how your profits are doing. So all of these are uh, important in my opinion for any mature uh, Amazon account seller. You need to be watching these, even if it's not you, if you have an employee who is doing it or a virtual assistant who is monitoring your account for you, it's important that they're using all of these tools to make sure that something that's going to affect your bottom line uh, does not affect you. Wow, oh, nice tips, nice tips. So we have uh, still about 15, 20 minutes left and we could cover a few more. Oh, wait a moment. There is a question about alerts. Alerts. I'm yes. sorry if I'm not pronouncing correctly. So Silver Son, 
well, difficult to understand the name, but this person is asking, how come sometimes the images are changed in my listing, but the image appears the same, but the resolution has been decreased to the level that the image is not even zoomable? Yes, uh, usually that's Amazon is the one who does that. They, they, I've seen that happen. They revert to an older image or some image that they found on some other website. That literally happened. I worked for a big diet pill company and Amazon went on the listing and I don't know where they got that image from. I think it might have been from an old walmart.com listing or something and they changed it, you know, for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, we had to open up a case and say, why did you guys change our image? You know, you're killing our sales and the image, you could not even zoom in on it. It was like, it looked like worse than a, a, a cell phone mobile phone camera picture. But yeah, why Amazon does that? I don't know. But if they do do that and you have alerts on now, at least you'll know. So you don't have to have more than one day where your, your, your sales will go down because of the terrible image. So alerts would notify, would recognize that it's the same image, but a different size or something like no, that. No. So what, it's not actually always the same image. What it is, is they revert they make like the thumbnail size of the image, they make that the main image. But we can detect that because in the, in the back end of Amazon, that technically is a different image. So, you know, even though, you know, the picture might be the same, but they're using a different image file. They're using the smaller resolution one. So we would be able to detect that, yes. Right, great. So yeah, let's cover um, uh, profit analytics. And also you said you want to show how people can get money back, right? Yeah, so those are the, um, let me share the screen again. Um, for the people who don't understand how that works, all right, um, that was the, the Refund Genie. So what happens uh, in, re in Refund Genie, and there's, there's many tools like that um, out here. So what we are doing is we are analyzing your sales and your reimbursements, your uh, returns. And what are the cases that we are looking for? We're looking for when maybe Amazon damaged something or Amazon lost inventory in their warehouse or Amazon lost something that was being shipped to the customer. Every time those things happen, Amazon is supposed to return money. And actually most of the time they do, but sometimes they don't. So what we are doing is we are showing you what Amazon has already returned to you, but we found that, hey, it might be this much that they owe you. So then you download the reimbursement report and it explains how you are able to write the case to Amazon. So you open up the case and say, hey, I found this product and this product and this product that you lost, but you never returned my money. Please return my money. And so then they'll investigate it. And more than half of the time, they agree. They say, yes, you are right. I'm sorry. And then in your seller central, now you have that money. And 50% um, of what you get goes to my salary. No, I'm just playing. We actually don't take any percentage of this. Whatever money you find using um, using this uh, report, you keep 100%. But look, if, if this one comes out, if they are able, if this customer, this is somebody's account, if they are able to uh, get this much money, guess what? They just paid for more than one year of their Helium 10 membership just by using this report. So that's why for many people, really, Helium 10 is free because they just use these reports and they get the money from Amazon and... It's like that money can pay easily for the, the Helium 10. The other thing we talked about more is the profits. I'll let this page uh, load up. And why uh, this is important, you know, I don't, I didn't set cost of goods, so I don't have, this is not accurate. I would love to have 50% margin or 68% margin, but of course this, this customer doesn't have that because I didn't put cost of goods, but you would put your cost of goods. Like, let's say, you know, your, your product for this uh, or your phone case or uh, to sell this phone case, um, it costs you, you know, $3. So you'd put that in and then you would know what your profit is. Uh, why is this sales trends important? What ha yesterday versus day before yesterday increasing, all right? Let's say you have this phone case uh, and you're selling like 10 units a day, right? Then all of a sudden, in one day, you sell 50 units, all right? This would come up on this report. Why is that important? Well, if you are only selling 10 units a day, um, maybe you have only certain amount of inventory in stock, but then what if all of a sudden a YouTube influencer, and I'm, I'm telling this from personal experience, this literally happened to me when I was selling phone cases before 
I had a phone case selling maybe three units a day, but then randomly a YouTube influencer bought the phone case on their own. We had no idea they bought it. And now they're using our phone case and they made a video like what is in my iPhone? That was the name of the video. And, and I can't believe that 20,000 people are watching this video because they want to know what is in the iPhone of this YouTube influencer. It's kind of crazy. But at the end of it, they said, oh yeah, and my phone case is this phone case and I got it from eBay or I got it from Amazon, um, whatever, right? So then all of a sudden we were selling 50 units a day and we ran out of stock because in like five days, uh, all of our inventory was wiped out because our inventory was based on selling only you know one or two units a day or 10 units a day. So here, this will avoid that because if all of a sudden you have a big time increase in your sales, now you have more visibility that, oh man, I better put some inventory to Amazon before I run out because now something is selling like crazy, right? And the same thing, declining, there might be an issue with your listing you didn't realize and it'll show up uh, on here. ROI, this is blank right now because again, I did not put my you know cost. I, I don't know what the cost of this customer uh, this is my friend's uh, my friend's account. I don't know what is their you know cost. So this is also something that will help you to see your return on investment. You're going to be able to see how many promos you you are doing. You know how many came with coupon order. How many refunds uh, are you are doing? What is your net profit by day? What is your units sold by day? Do you have a uh, very low inventory? Do you have too high inventory? Look. This product, they have 1,900 days of, it, of inventory. You know, I think they're going to get some, some FBA storage charges here. Which ones are the best sellers? And then I can go here to, let me see, is it inventory? No, expenses. I think it's expenses. Expenses. Let me go to their storage fees. Like this is January, okay? I'm going to go to Amazon storage fees. And this ties into the report where Amazon is uh, charging your FBA storage. All right. So here, most of these, um, they are almost getting charged nothing, you know, like 0.5 cents. But I'm just going to sort this. I think I can sort. Let me see. Let me try it. Nope, I can't sort that one. Oh, no, I can sort it. Okay. So here, what about this one? So for this one, they paid $27. This is almost nothing. So for me, I'm like, ah, I don't care. I paid $27 of storage. But for some of you, this could be a figure that you had no idea. Maybe you are paying $400 a month just in storage charges and you had no idea because there's no easy way to see this in Amazon. Here, I just click once and I can see now or I click twice and I can see this report. So this is also important. Once you link profits to your seller central, go to expenses, check your monthly storage fee details. I guarantee to you there is something you are paying here that you had no idea. And even though these are little, this adds up. I mean, this adds up to, you know, hundreds of dollars over 500 items. So you need to make sure that you you know how much you are paying Amazon uh, in storage fees. So uh, those, are the, those are the two most important things I believe that people need to uh, make sure that they are using when um, they're using, when they're, when they have a mature account and they think they're doing great sales, but these are things that can be taking money from your bottom line that you need to be aware of. And these two last tools which you presented, do they work for uh, European marketplaces as yes. well? Yes. Oh, perfect. All five the European marketplaces and mm -hmm. also what uh, it's tied to. So it's actually, I believe 12 or 13 total. So it's North America and Europe, but North mm -hmm. America is actually four. It's USA, Canada, Mexico, and Brazil. I don't know why Amazon considers Brazil North America, you know, but it does. Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos geography is not very good. And then for Europe, Spain, um, Italy, France, Germany, UK, Turkey, and India is considered uh, European. So that's where the profits, all of those, if you're selling in any of those marketplaces, it's going to go into your profits. Mm, great. And Turkey, is it, is there really some movement? Uh, is there already? Not much. Uh, it's Brad, that's the newest one. That's yeah. the newest one. Yeah. And it just, I think it was just a few months ago it started. So. I don't think we will see big numbers from Turkish Amazon for another year. But if you are selling in Turkey, you know, might as well know how much you're making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I see uh, that person who was asking about the uh, image change he experienced by Amazon. He says it was the same image where only resolution was changed. So 
and he suggests maybe it's a good idea for alerts, uh, Helium 10 alerts, to highlight what was really changed. If you see the same thumbnail in alerts, then you will know what's changed. So maybe... Yeah, you, you do see the thumbnail. You have the picture, um, like I had showed, of what image you know was before. Like even right there in that one image I showed you guys, you could see how the resolution was also different. Like it was very grainy. So you're going to have that visibility. We show that right there in the dashboard. Uh, you could see the resolution of the image uh, of the thumbnail, and then you could see that it was it was not the right. It was not. It was of course a, di a different image. Great. Thanks a lot, Bradley, for all this six part training. Those who didn't watch, look for the links below this video to find the other training parts, workshops. If you have any other suggestions or questions about Helium 10, let me know. And uh, I will invite Bradley again to talk and share the, the tools they have, they are creating. So thanks a Absolutely. lot. I appreciate thank being on and it was good to, it was good to meet, uh, talk to some of you guys and thank you for the questions. And then again, anytime you guys want me to come back about something specific or just Amazon in general, you know, um, I'd be happy to come on uh, with you guys and maybe a uh, future conference in Europe. I will meet, get to meet some of you in, in person. Yeah, perfect. And uh, yeah, people are happy. This was very useful. Good stuff. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.